everyone. I'm Juliette Sanchez, and I'm a rising junior at Columbia University in the School of Engineering, and I'm studying computer science with a minor in Hispanic studies. I am from Queens, but my family is originally from Colombia. Um, I really enjoy going to the beach, and I love to read. And I've also, I guess, this summer I'm working with a blue bonnet as a volunteer doing a data analyst. Awesome. Um, so next question, how did you get inspired to join the tech field? Um, I think I was inspired through my sister when I was in, actually maybe earlier when I was uh, younger, she always encouraged me to um, pursue anything that I was interested in. And at the time, I guess when I was six, it was um, to learn more about like neuroscience. So she would buy me like books and stuff like that to learn more. And then when I was in ninth grade, she found this program called Bridge Up at the American Museum of Natural History. And their focus was on um, closing the gender gap in computer science. So I joined that when I was in ninth grade. And that was when I was first introduced to computer science. And I worked with them all throughout high school. And they were really very important in like my process from high school to college. They had like college workshops and resumes and gave us like internship opportunities. Um, and that's when I really first became really passionate about computer science. Um, so what was your journey through STEM like? Um, well, I guess in high school, uh, I was always very interested in science. I, although I didn't really like math, but I always thought science was cool. So I always took like those classes. And then I was also part of the um, Bridge Up program, especially because in my school, we didn't have any computer science courses. So that's where I learned a lot of um, the skills that I have today. Um, and then when I went to college, I started um, working with the engineering school, um, started taking like more heavy science courses and got more involved in clubs on campus, such as like uh, Women in CS or the Society of Women in Engineering. Nice. Um, how do you feel being Latina and majoring in computer science? Do you feel like it's harder or unequal? Um, I think while I was in high school, since I was in this program that was catered towards women and women of color, um, I didn't realize, I guess, the, the gap until I went to college. And I started taking these huge like seminar classes for introduction to uh, CS classes. And I would look around and I would see like a bunch of like, uh, like men and I didn't see that many women or like, or that many women of color. And sometimes it, it feels like lonely. Um, but I'm happy that like, in recent years, like more women have been going into STEM and computer science, but yeah, it did feel lonely sometimes, or um, sometimes it was harder because it felt like I didn't have a, like a community of uh, women in those classes. Um, but yeah, I think in that case, I tried to, I looked a little harder, um, or I joined like the women in computer science, and they really did a good job of like, taking different CS majors uh, that are women across different years and providing mentorship um, to facilitate um, like being in a field that's not, that's more male dominated. Mm -hmm. What is your advice to girls in minority communities interested in a career in CS? Um, I think my biggest advice would be to find like programs in your area that focus on like the things you're interested in and that you're passionate about so that you can explore those passions more and like gain more experience. Or you can also try taking like college, like classes at like your local college. Um, to again, like learn more about like those passions. Something that I felt like I would have benefited from uh, when I was in high school um, would be to like reach out to like different professors and ask them to like talk and like learn more about like their career paths and maybe their research. Um, 
or through LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a really good platform to like message people and to learn more about their careers and passions. Um, so I guess my overall my advice would be like to put yourself out there and like not be afraid to like message people and ask them about like why they became interested in their careers and things like that. Or even join like like Girl Genius, like they're putting this together and having you have like more people to like speak to and ask questions. Yeah, so do you have any tips for high schoolers who want to double major in a cultural study in the future? Um, I think that's really cool, first of all. Um, I'm like majoring, I'm not double majoring, but I'm doing a minor um, in Hispanic studies. Um, and I think it's really cool to just learn about other cultures or even about your own culture more. Um, especially, I've personally noticed that it's a very nice um, break from very STEM heavy classes. Um, so I would say go for it. All right, so someone asked, um, what's the best way to find summer opportunities, camps or internships if they might be moving and not sure whether, where they'll be next summer? Um, I think maybe like reaching out, sometimes they have like contact information. Um, so you can reach out to them. I think right now it might be sort of up in the clouds. People don't really know, but you can tell them to like keep you updated on like what the status of those programs will be. Um, and if they do end up being online, um, it's still a great opportunity, even if it's not in person. Mm -hmm. And another person asked, how were you able to overcome your experiences with imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome is very tough. Um, I still like deal with imposter syndrome today. I think what has been most helpful to me is to kind of look at, look back on everything you've accomplished, even if it's like small things. Um, Cause that really shows kind of proves to me at least more um, like my value and how I don't have to wait for like other people to give me value or to like praise my accomplishments because like I know from like my own experiences and the things I've accomplished that like I have like value and that I am like smart and competent and I like deserve to be um, at the place I am whether it be like a job like a university a group Um, so another question that someone had is how were you able or how can you find a good work-life balance with school, work, and clubs? Um, I think it would be what I found most helpful was sort of to use, like, give myself, like, a schedule. Um, that way I don't, like, forget anything, um, set, like, deadlines in there, and then to, like, sort of block out a space of time where I can really focus on certain things. Um, something I found really helpful is like sort of this method where you have the most important things and the most urgent things, and then you have the most important things and the not so urgent, and then not important but still urgent, and then not important and not urgent. That way you can sort of like organize like your time better based on like what is the most important and what I can, what I can do quickly. Um, so I found that very helpful. Um, especially when you're like juggling so many things like work or like club and schoolwork. Um, yeah. Yeah. So since it's, you know, college app season starting soon, do you have any advice for the college admissions process? Yeah, I think I would like reach out either to like friends or advisors or teachers um, to look over like your college essay or your supplements. That way you can get like feedback and like, people um, can tell you what to like improve on or like sometimes like wording um, to make things like sound better. Um, sometimes colleges have like interviews so you can have like again like a professor like siblings or friends to like give you sort of like a mock interview that way you can get like your um, like your bio ready how you want to like introduce yourself. I would always have like questions ready like maybe two two to three questions that you want to ask the person that's interviewing you. Um, overall, I would just like kind of let your like personality shine. Like, don't be afraid if like the college is 
maybe like has a low admissions rate because I know that like I dealt with that when I was in college honestly don't even go to the websites that are like oh like what is your probability of getting into xy school because those aren't like true just like ignore those yeah um do you have any tips on landing internships at a tech company as a high school student I think the most helpful thing as a high school student would be to like uh, email them and like asking about like their career paths and like maybe more about what the company does um, and to like build a relationship before asking for a job or like a referral. Um, I think building a relationship with people um, is very valuable because then like they can help you out in the future. Um, I, I know that there are a lot of like summer program sorry for the background noise there's like thunder um but yeah I think there's also like a lot of like summer programs that either like partner with startups or I know that like big companies like Google sometimes have programs for like high school students um so I would like really look into those I know that there are sometimes like organizations that kind of put all those resources in one place so you don't have to go like searching uh, online for them. So, yeah. yeah, I'm kind of relating to my last question. How do you stand up or stand out for a tech internship? I think passion usually is what makes you stand out um, during an intern. You, sorry, you said a tech internship, like a technical interview, or just like a beginner? Yeah, interview? or just like uh, an internship in general. Okay. I think mostly like passion or like um being passionate about like the work you're doing or like the values of the company always makes you stand out um and maybe like how your your experiences um relate to the values of that company i think another thing that makes you stand out is telling the interviewer or during like the internship uh things you want like your ideas for the company or like things that you would want to like um do as like an employee there um, that's always like a very good sort of like thing to mention. So do you prefer interning at small, medium, or large companies and why? I don't think I have like a preference. I think they're all like different and they all have like their good and bad. I know that like uh, very large companies like probably have like more resources and like events or like mentorship um, but sometimes like they might depending on which companies like lack of like a community while smaller groups like companies or startups it's very like small so every you can I think for small especially startups uh, since it's so small you kind of have like a role in everything and you can kind of like see beyond what your job is and see if you're like interested in other things and then it, like eventually you can go down a different career path than you intended while like in a big company you're kind of either set in the role that you were hired for and maybe there's not as much movement while well, that's not the case in startups i think in both you well depending on the company you receive like a lot of like mentorship especially as like an intern um yeah where they can help you on your career path and how to progress in your goals both personal and career oriented um, but I think it mostly just depends like on like the person on whether they like a big company or a small one I think it also varies across companies all right so now I'm going to open it up to anyone who has a question feel free to unmute yourself and ask whatever you want um it is is learning computer science like hard or whatever yeah, I think, I think as, as you get higher up, it is, it can be very hard. Um, I think what I found helpful in like my very difficult CS classes is to like work with friends. Um, that way, like, if you guys have like different like weaknesses, you can help each other out. Um, but yeah, like, I think it's as hard as like any other field. And it's like you put the work into it and like it's something that you're passionate about and you enjoy doing. I think it's like it's hard but it's like work that you're like happy doing or something you're happy learning more about 
Um, I had a question regarding like your role, like trying to find what role you think is best for you in the tech field because of how um, diverse it is with um, different job positions. So what exactly um, did you do to kind of find what role you enjoyed doing the most? Um, I think I would mostly go to like, there, I know I like my university, they have like faculty talks or like student panels where they talk about um, maybe they're, how they apply computer science or for the faculty, like sometimes they do research. And I think those are very good because you get to ask questions and see um, about the work they're doing. I think it's also good to like join like different clubs. I know there are clubs that aren't like computer science, but they need computer scientists. So um, maybe like a newspaper club needs to build a website and you can see if you like web development by like um, volunteering to help them with that. Um, you can also like just apply for different jobs that seem interesting, try it out. And if you don't like it, well, at least you know what you don't like, you can cross it off the list and you can look for more things that maybe you're interested in about. Um, so I think overall it's just to like try things because even if like something that you don't like, you'll know that like for the future. Thank you. Are your SAT scores a big portion of your college, college admission? Um, I think they're, they're in, like important, but they're not as like, I think as valuable as maybe like your personal, like your college essay or your supplements, because I think in that part, it really lets you like shine in terms of like your personality and your leadership goals. Um, I wouldn't say, like I would say, if you don't, if like your SAT scores or your ACT scores, if you feel like they're not good enough for like a specific college, I wouldn't let you let that like hold you back from applying because you, you honestly like never know. Like it's, important but it's like not really that important especially now when like everything went remote and their colleges are now moving towards like not even having it be a requirement like it's optional um but i would never let that like discourage you like speaking from personal experience when i was applying to college my sec scores weren't like high at all like i think they were like pretty average and like i was still able to get into like a good college thank you um sorry um so like when you get a computer the jobs that come out of a computer science degree like a software engineer a computer programmer etc like can you get these those jobs like online like i i remember like this one teacher told me that his sister uh worked from online internationally internationally for a company that was outside of the U.S. so is working online possible? Yeah I think especially like in the current pandemic a lot of jobs have moved remotely um, they're giving their employees more freedom to work at home. Um, yeah like I'm working from home right now um, especially because computer science or like software engineering roles are something that you can mostly do from home. Um, yeah so I think you could probably like apply for different jobs and you'll be able to. How is the interview process like online? Online? Um, from my experience, they usually either use Zoom or like Google Meet and they'll, you'll share your screen. Um, they'll, especially for CS interviews, you'll have like a technical portion where they ask you like a CS question um, and you'll have to like code up the answer either on like Google Doc where they'll have like specific like interfaces for uh, coding. Sometimes depending on like the role there's like multiple interviews. How do you prepare specifically for those coding interview challenges that they might uh, give you? So I think one of the helpful things is there's this website, I don't know if you've heard of it, but there's like it's called Leak Code and they have like a bunch of computer science technical interview questions that you can practice on 
Um, I know that there are classes offered by a lot of companies to sort of uh, guide you through the information um, and help you um, practice and learn different methods. I think there's one called CodePath. They have like a summer session and they like, it's like a 12 week course where you learn um, the specific to different coding interviews and they bring people in um, to do mock interviews. I don't remember the specific website, but there's also another um, platform where you can, you're paired with like a, another student and you interview each other. So you're given like a question, a CS question, and you can practice uh, your interview skills. Yeah, but I, for that, I think that's just a lot of practice. Like no one's really good at it. It takes a lot of practice to learn how to communicate with the interviewer while coding at the same time. I consider it more of like sort of a conversation than an interview, sorry. Um, because the interviewer mostly wants to help you out. Milan, sorry. The interviewer mostly wants to help you out. It's not like they're interrogating you. Um, so it's like the two of you are reaching the answer. That makes so much sense, thank you. You're welcome. What do you recommend for someone like us where they're majoring in computer science and Latinas, like, like community wise, because in my school, there's not a lot of Latinas that are majoring in um, like STEM fields. So like, what would you recommend to, to create sort of like a community? Um, I think it's, like super helpful to just like make like a club even if it's not like specific to um STEM you can make like a club where you guys can everyone can meet um and talk about like the different classes and stuff like that and then it can eventually evolve into something that's more um STEM oriented where you can host events oh my god uh, you can host like sorry you can host like events um that are focused on like what are the different opportunities. Sorry, my dog is great in Sunday. Um, yeah, so you can have like different um, like sort of workshops where you learn about like the different resources available, even if it's not specific to your school. There might be like Google has a bunch of like resources about like computer science and AI and like lesson plans. Um, so you can use those. I know that there are like sort of there's like rewriting the code is a community and within the same organization they have um, they have like a sub program called uh, Latinas de RTC. Um, so joining I think they they work with uh, high school students too. Um, so that's like you can like get support from them. Um, and how to like build a club uh, focused on like Latinos in tech. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, that was like kind of all over the place. I have another question about um, working online. So um, it, like, is it like possible to have your, like the job that you're working for, like the headquarters of it is like outside of the US, like internationally? And you can still get money from like, I don't know, yeah. You can still get money from that company even though it's outside of the US. I'm not too sure about that one. Um, I would have to research that one because I'm not really sure. I think maybe if it's like an internship, you'll be able to. Um, I'm not sure about like full employment because there's like international visas or things like that. <laughs> Um, so I'm not too sure about that one. Sorry. Hi, um, my name's Natalie, and I saw in your bio that you are involved in like an early stage startup as an intern. I was wondering how you got involved, like interning at a startup. Where did you like look for those opportunities? I think a lot of um, startup opportunities are available on like uh, Angels List. And you can um, message the people that work there and see if there's any opportunities. 
Um, for the one I'm involved in right now, I was matched with them through a club on campus. Um, the club pairs like MBA graduate students with undergrads with like technical skills and you work on like the startup together. Um, yeah, I think, it's, sorry, I think overall it's, for startups, it's good to reach out to people. But in the meantime, I can totally ask some more questions. So um, what are some skills that you learned about data analysis and data science from volunteering at Blue Bonnet Data? Um, I think I mostly learned how to use uh, different like government data, such as like, the census and their like APIs and how to use R to make like different diagrams or um, like think about the data in a way that um, like accomplishes like the certain goal I have, um, especially since for the work I'm doing, it's with campaigns um, and how we can make their campaign like more sufficient or how to target like um, voters that can be persuaded. Um, so we use a lot of uh, like data from their district um, to see who is like a Democrat and who is a Republican and who um, volunteers frequently. So if they volunteer frequently, you know that you most likely have their support versus someone who votes um, in either direction and that's someone you can persuade more. Um, so we, that's how we like use the data. We see like who is someone we can like persuade more so we can get more votes for um, X candidate. Um, yeah, this is the first time I've ever done any data analysis, so it's like all very new to me, um, but it's very cool. Um, R is also like very cool. I'm currently like using like Python to uh, analyze like census data. And what relationships with mentors, communities, or teachers were pivotal in getting to where you are today? Um, yeah, I participated in a lot of, especially my first and second year in mentorship programs like uh, Built by Girls um, or through like my university. They also have like either with upperclassmen or with like alumni. I think that's a really good uh, strategy is to reach out to alumni. Um, yeah, because they either like informed me about internship opportunities or job opportunities at their company or they provided like valuable advice for interviews or building a resume or overall like networking at um, career fairs or over LinkedIn. Um, since they have like so many, well, since they were like once in our position, um, they have like a lot of advice um, to pass down. So I would look for those opportunities to interact with either alumni or like people and careers that you're interested in pursuing because um, they're they have a lot of like valuable experience to pass down all right so someone asked um, how do you is, oh yeah go ahead you can ask your question oh okay um is is it worth it getting a ma master's degree in computer science rather than a bachelor's degree in computer science because what if it might be a little more harder or you'll you'll get the same job opportunities as it is getting a bachelor's degree just as much as if you get a master's degree so a master's degree like is it worth it um i guess i'm not too sure about that question either i'm just like a rising junior so i haven't um given them doing a master's yet um yeah, so I don't, I'm not sure about that one either. Sorry, I know that like, if you don't get like a master's degree, there you should still have like enough experience to like go into the industry. Um, so I know that like a master's degree isn't like 100% like necessary, but if you maybe want to like specialize more in like a specific part of computer science, um, that would be cool too. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so someone in the chat asked, how do you manage or organize your personal life plus balancing classes or your job? Do you have any tips or apps that you use? 
I think I, uh, for apps, there's like this um, sort of timer where you set the amount of time that you want to be very focused on um, without distractions. So I use that one. And then like after that certain amount of time, you give yourself a break because it's hard and you're not used to like working for like hours and hours um, at a time. I also try to like organize like my desk space and to make sure that like um, I have everything that I need so that I won't get distracted, like maybe getting up and like looking for something. Um, I'll try to have like a bottle of water again so that I don't get up and like get distracted. Um, maybe I'll like play music. I'll have like a planner with all the things I want to do uh, on a certain day or like my deadlines. I have a calendar too um, where I plan out like any meetings I have or any deadlines I have to make sure that I don't forget to do anything. Um, yeah, I think those are mainly like the strategies I use, especially when you're remote it's very important to create like a workspace for yourself that's outside of um, sort of if it's like in the living room or like in your room, you can set like a table apart where you do your work. That way you sort of get in that mindset of like you're in a workspace instead of like, and I know it's, it's harder now when you can't really go to a library, um, but I've found it helpful to create sort of like a mini office space in my room so that I can do work. Um, I guess the most recent question kind of relates to that. Do you have any tips for avoiding distraction, particularly on your computer, like websites, social media apps, et cetera? I know that there is like a, like a program that locks you out of like any social media, like you'll put in um, the websites that you don't want to use while you're working and it will just not let you um, go into those websites for like as long as you want, if it's like an hour or two. Um, so that's like a, that would be like a good, like, just nothing, no sort of social media or anything um, while you're working. That way you can't, like, it can't be a distraction at all because you can't access them. Um, I know that there's apps for that too, if you just don't want to use your phone while you're working. Um, yeah, I found that I usually use, I don't remember what the software is called, but I use that when I, like, I can't focus at all. When applying to college, do you have any advice on essay writing and how you incorporated your CS passion into those essays, if you did? Um, I think having either conversations with like uh, your counselor or like your friends on how to like kind of flush out all your ideas of what you want um, the focus of your college essay to be. I think that's important if you wanna learn or trying to figure out what you wanna focus on. Um, for me, my college essay, I sort of explained my experience um, getting into CS and how I started working at the American Museum of Natural History and what that experience was like um, doing computer science for the first time. And I tried incorporating not just like um, sort of the experience, but I kind of like went into like um, sort of my commute there. Um, and what that was like and how that gave me like an opportunity to like uh, think about like the problems that I was working on at the uh, museum sort of to give it more of like a storytelling to make it uh, more of a story mm -hmm. um, or to like it go into maybe like the hardships you had in CS or things you overcame um, doing different projects and stuff like that um but yeah i would sometimes it takes a while to kind of finalize what you want the themes or the focus of your essay to be like but that's like totally okay like you can have multiple themes too it doesn't have to be like just cs um you can incorporate like what it's like being a woman in cs or like maybe if your school doesn't offer cs classes how you took the initiative to learn like on your own Yeah, so kind of relating to that, tips on college essays when a person is undecided. I think if you're undecided, maybe explore like 
things like you're passionate about or things that you would be interested in like learning more about or eventually pursuing um if you don't want to if you're like completely undecided you don't necessarily have to talk about like a career in your college essay you can talk about um like an experience that impacted you or you learned something um you can talk about like your family you can talk about like on you can honestly in a college essay you can talk about anything as much as long as you have like passion or it's important to you because when you have passion that like really shines through um in your writing so it's your college essay does not have to be focused on like your career paths at all what does a day in your life look like as a cs and hispanic studies student like your lectures labs and assignments um i think right now uh my day-to-day -day life mostly looks like i like wake up pretty early and i go to my family has like a small business um so i'll go there and i'll like wake up in the morning well not oh once i'm there sorry i'll like maybe read some articles to get my mind sort of in like the working mood um and i'll sit down and i'll like work on either like my job or like um sometimes i teach cs classes to um kids so i'll do that um yeah i think i guess when i was in college it was different like it was different. I would go to class and then I have like club meetings. And then once I had club meetings, I tried going to like the gym and then I would go to the library to work um, on different homework assignments at night. So I, it's kind of different now. What's the biggest tip you would give yourself back in high school? Um, I would tell myself to like not be afraid to like reach out to people or to ask questions because um, even if they like I might think they're stupid they're most likely not stupid at all and in terms of like reaching out to people they usually like want to help you um, and answer your questions if it's like about career paths um, because interacting with other people has like a lot of value from learning from their experiences um, especially like in computer science where there's like either so many things you can do with computer science and you don't know where to start. It's good to like talk to people um, to see what they do and like what they enjoy. So overall, I would just not be afraid to reach out to people and like ask as many questions as you want. Um, I have a question, another question. Um, I was kind of curious about your experiences as a Latina in STEM. Um, like, how did your identity shape where you are today? Um, what sorts of things like motivate you? And how do you maintain like empowered as a female and Latina in STEM? Because I know you kind of talked about it with imposter syndrome. Um, but how do you manage um, the way other people will treat you rather than like an internal sort of conflict you may have like just things that are more out of your control um yeah those can be sometimes like hard when i guess people don't see or don't treat you with the value that you treat yourself with i think in those cases the best thing to do is to surround yourself with people who do care about you and who do want to see you succeed um so that way, if those things do happen, you have like a support system where you can talk to those people about um, what you're going through and how they can like help you. Um, in terms of like staying motivated, um, especially when there aren't that, at least there aren't that many like uh, women or Latinas in STEM. Um, sometimes like I'll look at like family members, like for example, like my mom sometimes is like one of my biggest inspirations and. She's someone I talked about like in my college essay. So even if she's like not in STEM, um, she's like a very big inspiration for me. Um, or looking for like role models. Sometimes it is hard, but um, sometimes it's important to like look for role models in the STEM, like the careers like you're interested in um, so that you can reach out to them and learn more about their experiences or to just like 
see them and know that like there are like women before you who have gone through a similar path and have like accomplish their goals and like got into like a place that maybe you want to go to or get to one day um so that you know that it's like totally possible like it will be hard but like you will make it especially because like you know everyone here is like so smart and so dedicated that it's like totally possible thank you so much that was really helpful you're welcome Okay, we have another question in the chat. Tips to grow and reach a larger audience for a new youth organization with the goal of helping middle and high school students interested in tech careers. Um, I think maybe like through your school would be a good opportunity. Um, if like your school has like social media, you can like ask your administrators if you can like put out like a sort of like a poster to get more people interested um in joining and going to your events so i think your school community would be a really good start um and then maybe you can also expand to like friends of friends and like try to spread it through word of mouth um i think through like social media um it's a lot it's very helpful to like post events on like facebook or instagram um yeah, I think as like when you're starting small word of mouth, I guess is the most helpful thing or like the first step. Um, and then getting like other maybe organizations to post about your events would be good too to reach out. Okay, someone wants to know about your experience um, with a rise. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, like the oh S R I S E. Oh yeah, I think when I was in tenth grade, I did with the Arise program, um, and it was through NYU, and they paired you with like a a lab to do research. Um, that was like a really cool experience because I got to work with um, I think it was like it was called a the developmental genomics lab. And it was focused on learning about um, the roles of different genes and proteins in uh, fruit flies. And learning more about those roles would help sort of um, prevent cancer from developing so quickly or reproducing so quickly. Um, so that was a really cool summer because I worked in a lab uh, the entire summer. And I got to learn about different equipment. Um, I received like mentorship from the um, head of the lab. Um, and she was really cool. And then there was, a, we also had like a community of other interns who were working at other labs. Um, and they had a lot of um, like socializing events. And then at the end, everyone was able to present their projects to each other and like other faculty from other labs. So I, that was also really cool in terms of like networking and learning about what other labs did um, and their experiences. So I think that was a very, very cool summer. Was there anything that surprised you going into college as a CS major? I think my first year, I kind of went through this sort of bump in the road where I thought I didn't like computer science anymore. Um, and I was thinking of pursuing maybe something else in tech. Um, but then I realized, like I initially didn't know that computer science or could be applied to sort of social advocacy or social justice. Um, I found out when I went to a faculty talk and the professors were talking about their research. Um, I think one of them, was doing research with machine learning, learning about how to detect um, acts of like violence in Chicago from like the way the youth um, interacted with like Twitter, Instagram, and how those can be prevented. So um, that faculty talk really impacted me because um, I didn't know that that was an avenue of CS that could be taken. Um, so then I started looking for more opportunities to use my skills in CS. 
uh, for social justice um, or applying to like fellowships that had that focus. I quickly learned that there aren't that many. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's the thing that surprised me the most is that um, I kind of find, found out what the specific application of computer science uh, was that I wanted to pursue. What's one of your favorite CS projects? I think when I was in high school during 2017, during the solar eclipse, I made an app that um, would take your location and it would tell you um, how long the eclipse would last and what type of eclipse it was. It was. Um, and I think that's my favorite project because it was like the first time I ever made an app. And I was working with uh, these two other girls who were super cool and it was a very fun summer. And it was like the, one of the first times where I like created something from beginning to end. Um, so it was very satisfying to see at the end of the summer, like this app that I created um, and that other people could use too. It was very like satisfying. Okay, so we have five minutes left. So feel free to put in the chat or ask your last questions. Um, but I'll ask them right now as people are doing that. All right, so has anyone ever told you to pursue a different field for any reasons regarding race, gender, or other backgrounds? And if so, how did you not let those words affect you? Um, yeah, I think that has happened to me before. Um, someone told me that it would be better if I pursued something like writing or like journalism. And it was it was something that I was like interested in. I do enjoy like writing, but my passion has always been um, tech or like computer science. Um, so in those cases, I always like again tried finding like community of people who I knew can support me, and sort of evaluating my own like giving myself affirmations in a way to tell myself that like you know you are smart enough to be in this field like you are good enough to be here just as anyone else that is in this room. Um, you have like value. So I think it's very important to tell yourself those things because um, someone can tell you those things a million times and you won't believe them um, unless you start telling them to yourself and you look at yourself in the mirror and you see that you are indeed accomplished and you are smart and you deserve to be there just as anyone else. Like it doesn't matter what like your race is, what your gender is, what your sexual orientation is, like that doesn't impact, well, it, like it impacts your experiences in that field, but it doesn't impact like your worth. Um, why did you choose Columbia to spend your next, or the past two years, I guess four years? Um, one of the reasons why I picked Columbia was because of like their engineering school. Um, I did a lot of research into the projects their professors were working on, um, and I really wanted that network, um, the opportunity to work on those projects and to do research with some professors. I really liked how um, it was, they had their own campus, um, but you were still in the city. I thought that was uh, very cool, especially having lived in like a sort of suburban part of Queens, um, to have access to like museums or like different restaurants. Um, I think one of the moments where I realized that I really wanted to go to Columbia um, was when I received, like after I was um, admitted, I received the letter from um, the Hispanic Society at Columbia. And they told me like, they, they were like, congratulations. Like, we really hope you like uh, come to Columbia. Like, these are like some events you can go to if you want to like, uh, learn more about like the community here um, and that made me feel like very welcomed and even if like I wasn't attending yet it made me feel that once I got there I would have like a community of people um, there to support me and like cheer me on along the way. Um, I think another big thing was that I was part of this program called AFP and um, they let those students come on campus before the fall semester and they let you, they let you sort of get used to being on campus. We lived there 
um, for a month and we took some of the classes that we would take in the spring but in the summer to get us more like used to um, sort of what the rigor is like um, while also giving us the opportunity to make friends and build a community before like everyone all, all 10,000 whatever students got onto campus um, so that was really cool too. Um, someone asked tips for applying to Columbia. Um, I think I would really like focus on like your college essay and your supplements to make sure that they really like shine um, and they really show off like your personality um, and what your passions are. I think that's one of the few opportunities in a college application to tr to show off like who you are. Um, yeah, I think it's also like important to have like either like friends or family or uh, advisors to like check those essays um, and give you feedback um, so that they're like the best that they can be. Um, yeah, I think if sometimes students don't get interviews for like Columbia, sometimes they do. If you do get one, like it's mostly like an opportunity for you to ask questions because um, they're usually students. So you can ask like any questions about um, you have about their experience or like about like clubs and stuff. Um, so don't be scared if like you have an interview. It's mostly just for you to ask questions instead of like the other way around. All right, well, if no one has any more questions, we can start to wrap up. Julia, do you have any last thoughts or words of wisdom? Um, yeah, I was gonna say that if anyone has like any other questions um, that they didn't get to ask me today, I was gonna put my email in the chat so you guys can like message me um, and ask me about anything. Awesome, well everyone, thank you so much for coming and a huge thank you, Julia, for um, taking time out of your day to participate in this AMA. Thank you, thank you for having me.